Hey guys, today we are going to see the 16th chess game in the fourth match between Alexander McDonnell and Louis Chance Le Bourdonnais, played in London in 1834. Its final position is one of the most famous positions in the history of the game. You must have seen it in the thumbnail. The game starts with e4, c5, the Sicilian defense. Knight to f3, knight to c6. b4, c pecks on b4. Knight takes on b4. White gets some space advantage, while black tips both the center pawns and gets a half open c5 to attack on. Knight takes on c6. This allows black to regain control of the b5 square when black re x the knight with a pawn. B takes on c6. Not b pecks on c6 because this would mean black is giving up a center pawn as well as leaving himself open to an exchange of queens that would prevent him from castling. Bishop to c4, knight tree of 6, bishop to g5, planning to exchange the bishop and the knight. Bishop to e7, developing the bishop and unpinning black's f6 leg to ensure that after an exchange on f6, white's bishop can be retaken with the bishop instead of the g7 pawn, which would otherwise weaken black's king side pawn structure. Queen to e2, by delaying development and exposing his queen to possible attack along the a6 f1 diagonal, white encourages black to advance in the center. d5, bishop takes on f6, bishop takes back on f6, bishop to b3, and cousins. Cousins, a5. A5 carries a double threat. Firstly, it crepens A4, trapping the right bishop, and secondly, it brings the A6 square under rook protection, allowing bishop to A6, pinning the right queen against the rook with a potential exchange advantage. E takes on D5, C takes on B5, rook to D1, D4, and C4. C3 would have been the best move here as this passed pawn is not really as strong as his opponent's well-supported pass d pawn. Well, you know where this passed pawn will lead to, but we will get to that later. Queen to b6, bishop to c2. Now, in this position, if you think of playing queen takes on b2, then, overaculations, my friend, you lose instantly, as then, bishop takes on yet 7 comes with the check, and you lose your queen on the next move. So instead, bishop to b7, knight to b2, rook a to e8. Here, black made the good decision to use his a-file rook to cover the e-file, leaving his f-file rook in place that supporting the pawns that in turn support its past b-pawn. Knight to e4, bishop to d8. Clearly, f5 is coming from black. C5, queen to c6. Queen takes on b2, it's still not a good auction as it still loses the queen for a bishop and knight. f3, bishop to e7. Rook a to c1, f5. This is now the beginning of the end. That begins the decisive advance. This pawn storm will strip everything from its path. Queen to c4, check. King pleach egg. Bishop to a4. Queen yet 6. Black's play from this point to the end of the game is well worthy of the attention. White's bishop pinned the queen against the rook, threatening to win the exchange, but black is unfazed. Bishop takes on e8. Left takes on e4. c6. e takes on f3. Prelude move. Now, if white pecks bishop, there is a forced checkmate. Order for black, striping lead, queen e3 check. f pecks on g2 check. King takes, rook f2. King g1, rook pecks b2 check. King h1, queen f3 check. King g1, and finally, checkmate. So instead of that, rook c2, queen e3 check. King h1, this was a plunder, as rook f2 would have been a good holding move, possibly a draw 
but now it is winning for black bishop to c8 bishop d7 f2 rook f1 b3 rook to c3 bishop takes on b7 c takes on b7 and e4 queen c8 bishop to d8 queen c4 queen e1 rook c1 b2 queen c5 rook g8 rook b1 e3 queen c3 queen takes on b1 rook takes on b1 e2 and here comes resignation there is nothing right can do now as here comes a queen here comes another queen and can get one more queen